Mirai continues her wacky vacation with Kakashi and Guy, and this episode asks the age-old question, are you a cat person or a dog person? The charming, silly, and goofy adventures of Mirai Saratobi continue in another episode of Boruto Naruto Next Generations. That's right, this little spin-off arc right here is honestly pretty freaking great. What I really love about it is that not only do we get to spend time with a seldom-seen character, but it looks like this arc is also going to give us an excuse to bring back a lot of those classic Naruto characters. A lot of those characters that didn't get a lot of screen time, but are definitely fan favorites amongst the fan base. Not only did we get to see the returns of Kakashi and Guy, but this episode also brings back Kiba Inazuka. Yes, the dog ninja himself. And he's also bringing along his girlfriend Tamaki, who if you don't remember is actually the granddaughter of Neko Ba, the grandma cat lady. And that's actually kind of perfect as when they actually go to the land of hot springs in this episode, there's this big massive festival that's going on. A playful festival amongst the people, which is connected to dogs and cats. Apparently the history of this village, which actually has three distinctive stories which are practically all the same, involve a random villager walking down a road where he sees a dog or a cat who leads them to a hot spring which eventually is able to turn this area into a popular local spot for people. Now the thing is, nobody knows if it was a cat or a dog who's actually responsible for founding this village, so the entire village is divided amongst people who love cats and people who love dogs. And everyone in the village during this time is wearing like a mask to signify if they like cats or dogs. And a lot of people from around the ninja world have decided to come and join this festival. And of course, representing what sort of favorite pet they do love. And that's the perfect excuse to bring in both Kiba and Tamaki. And because these are two characters who are very in love with cats and dogs, it also brings about a great amount of tension between these two characters. Basically, this is an episode about a lover's quarrel between Kiba and his girlfriend Tamaki, and Mirai, feeling that she has a strong connection to Kiba, considering that he was the student of her mother, decides to get herself involved and desperately wants to help these two out, as well as to quickly get to the hot springs as quick as possible, because she's desperate for a bath, learning that not only is this vacation not two days long, it's 20 days long, and girl needs a bath. Ultimately, this was a pretty goofy episode of the series, but I think one of the strongest elements about this arc is how Mirai continues to learn a little bit more about her father and realizes the strong impact that he's actually had on all of the people in her life. In fact, at the very end of the episode, as she's desperately trying to bring Kiba and Tamaki back together, she actually utilizes something that was very reminiscent of Asuma. A lighter. That was one of the most distinctive things about Asuma is that he was basically a chain smoker and he always had this lighter with him all the time. A lighter which eventually went to Shikamaru. However, at the very end of this episode, these cat and dog people are having a massive fanatical war with one another, ramming their giant cat and dog idols into one another, and that's when Mirai decides to use her distinctive genjutsu abilities to try and trick them all by using this lighter and combining it with her genjutsu to transform it into a massive fiery god known as Nenu, which is a combination of dog and cat. And she desperately tries to appeal to both sides in this moment, when suddenly Guy, like a freaking idiot, does a dynamic entry in his wheelchair, mind you, to blast through this thing, destroying all the hot springs, and inadvertently bringing all these cat and dog people together. Kiba and his girlfriend get back together and go for a nice soak in the hot springs. Mirai gets to finally have her bath, and she gets to learn about the history of Asuma and his lighter. In every single episode, she gets closer to her father, realizing that while she took a lot of the looks and personality of her mother, in particular her hair, she is still a surprising amount like her father. It's touching, it's goofy, and honestly, I kind of love it. So, what's the rundown on this episode of Boruto Naruto Next Generations? I'm not expecting expecting much crazy action from this arc, but I will say that this arc is kind of making me appreciate why I love these characters so much and why they've been so enduring to me for such a long time. I was really hoping that we would finally get an episode that would involve Kiba, as I still believe that of the original main characters, he's definitely one of the least used 
characters. I mean, he basically has a distinctive character quirk, and they always run with it, that he's kind of like a rough guy who really loves dogs, and they really play with that in this episode as well, as he also seems to have something of a hero complex, always sort of living in the shadow of the main characters of the series, and to finally get him see him get so much praise from all these dog-obsessed people, I actually have to say is kind of cathartic. His girlfriend Tamaki, by the way, I don't really know how I feel about her, as she's barely gotten any screen time from the entire series whatsoever, but she seems like the perfect type of fiery temptress girlfriend for Kiba. They butt heads a lot, but you can tell at the end of the day that they genuinely do care about one another, and I have to say it's absolutely adorable watching Mirai try to bring these two back together desperately, even when it seems like she screws up in just about every single situation. But still, like I said, I think it all came together at the very end of the episode where she ended up using the trademark of her father without even realizing it in order to bring these people together, and Guy yet again ends up making things worse, but but somehow making things better with the use of his ridiculous ninja-style techniques. It's an episode which is building on a lot of the side characters of the series, and yet again, this is an arc which has none of the main characters present at all, and it still manages to be incredibly gauging and have really great comedic timing. I loved this episode right here, which is why I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5, just like the last one. If you like these characters, you gotta check out this arc right here. It's really charming to the absolute core, and I'm, I'm definitely getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. As I said, this arc is going to be bringing back a lot of classic characters who didn't get a lot of screen time from the first half of the series, and it looks like that's going to continue in the next episode, where it looks like Ten Ten is finally going to be returning. I don't know if she's going to be using her distinctive, super-powered ninja weapons, or if she's just going to be there to be goofy with Mirai, all I know is I can't wait to see all of that. And as I said in the last uh, episode, Mirai is a really fun character. I mean, I dare say she can, she's more interesting than the actual main characters of the series, and I love her shtick of how she always manages to have this inner dialogue or monologue with herself, which takes the form of a chibi version of herself, which, you know, they do that in like a million other anime series, but here it just comes across as incredibly adorable, and I just want to see more from her her character. Like I said, I can't wait to see how this is ultimately going to evolve, but I'm very pumped up to see what's going to happen next, and how Mirai is going to learn a little bit more about the legacy of her father, Asuma. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this episode. I'd love to get yours. Tell me all of them in the comment section below, and what you hope to see from the rest of the Mirai arc. Thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay down there, baby.